everyone, today we are going to look at the much anticipated Grok 4 model compared to the likes of um, OpenAI's O3 Pro model and Gemini 2.5 Pro. So in Gen FEA here we've got a, a, a blank model with no model entities, but we've added some sections and some materials and some design groups. And we're going to use that same template with the same instruction um, across the various models and see how they perform in tasks for creating 3D geometry within Gen FEA. So we're just priming the LLM with the workbook information from the Gen FEA model. So that'll include things like the uh, existing materials sections and design groups. And we're using the, the smaller, lighter models to do the model priming. And then we'll use the heavy models to do the actual heavy lifting. So I pre-populated the portal frame generator um, tool applet here with some information and instructions um, specifying the geometrical requirements of our portal frame structure, the materials to use and the sections to apply and so on and so forth. And we'll see if these models can um, maintain spatial awareness, perform the mathematical calculations and actually generate the model correctly. So we can see with the Grok model here, the Grok 4 model has produced the nodal output, but it didn't produce a tabled output as it is instructed to do. So it didn't 100% follow the instructions, um, but that doesn't mean it's not performing well. That's, you know, a quite easy fix. We can switch to a different model like the mini fast model and just tell it to convert that output into markdown table, which is what we expect to see within design mode. All right, so let's see what it does. Um, I mean, Grok 4 has done the heavy lifting. We're just using the Grok 3 Mini to process the data into a readable output that we can bring directly into Gen FEA. And the instruction was to create nodes first so we can review it. And once the nodes are created, then we can um, approve and tell it to proceed and create the framing elements connected to it. So now that we've got the nodes, let's update the model and have a quick look. Um, at first glance, it looks pretty good. I'm going to do some measurements and just check the base spacing, whether um, that is what we specified. We can see there 4.5 meters. That's what we said. And if we look at the eaves height there, um, that should be 3.5 meters. That's correct. And if we look at the apex height, I think that was 4 meters. So let's see if it's done that correctly in 4 meters. There we go. And just looking at those nodes, it seems or appears to be correct. So. If we go back now to design mate and we tell the Grok 4 model to now proceed and generate the framing elements and let's see how it does. Obviously, I've sped up the time it took for the reasoning. I'll show you how long it took um, a bit later, the exact times. Um, but it did take a couple of minutes to run through that. You can see there in the previous session, it took uh, 57 seconds. So just under a minute to generate the nodes. And let's see how long it takes to generate the connecting elements. So currently, um, it's running up to one minute. So we just let that go through. Um, and I think it was just under two minutes. So yeah, just below two minutes. And it's now started to generate the framing element output. So we can see just, you know, at first glance, it's now following the instruction. So it's generating the markdown table. We can see it's creating those elements with start, end nodes, the element IDs, the materials, the assigned sections and design groups. So it's doing a pretty good job at first glance. And it seems it split the beam and columns from the purlins and the bracing, which is interesting. So it split them by material into two different tables, which is perfectly fine. So let's bring that into Gen FEA and see what it looks like when we update the model. At first glance, that looks pretty decent. It didn't create ridge or eave beams because I didn't actually specify ridge or eave beams. So I guess that's forgivable. Um, I was hoping it would create the region eave beams just using the Berlin sections. But OK, I understand that that instruction was not clear from my end. So let's go ahead and tell it to add those and see um, if it follows the instruction and maintains that connectivity and spatial awareness within the model. So we're just telling it here, add the region eave beams, use the same section as for the Berlin and see what that looks like. Again, this has been sped up quite a bit. So um, once it's through the reasoning, we can see it's starting to produce a continuation of that previous table. So it's it's keeping that connectivity and 
and previous information and when we update the model after bringing that in looks pretty good i mean the bracing could probably be split into two bays um, at the roof but again we didn't give any instructions we just said added bracing in the last bay so that's pretty impressive so that's kind of a first shot approach and we can see that it's generated the module the model yeah, pretty much accurately so we can see the discretization there between the elements the connectivity between the nodes and the framing elements um it split the rafters where the perlets intersect um but it didn't split the bracing which is correct so that's pretty impressive pretty good job now let's look at the OpenAI 03 Pro model. Now I've had really good results in the past with the 03 models. Let's see how it performs with this task this time. So we'll use the mini model just to do the model primer and then we'll switch to the 03 Pro model, the latest one. And you can see that we can't set the temperature on these ones. So um, it's, it's uh, not enabled in the API. So we'll just run it as it is. Um, and this took pretty long. So I sped this up significantly like 30 times because design mate will cut out after five minutes of no response so in five minutes o3 pro could not solve the problem and produce the output i tried it again a second time got the same result um it took too long to think and eventually um you know the the result just comes back as as uh, non-responsive that was a little bit disappointing because I've had good results with O3 before. I get the feeling that after a while, after the initial release of models, they get dumber somehow. I don't know how that works. But then I thought, let's try the O3 deep research model. It's also a reasoning model. It's also O3, but it's the deep research. Again, unfortunately, the same results after five minutes of waiting, nothing. So that was quite disappointing. Not quite sure why that's happening. I might try it again tomorrow and see if we get different results. Maybe there's a little bit of a lag in the um, server endpoints. Then I thought, okay, let's then switch to O4 Mini Deep Research. It's a mini model, so it's not as smart. And I, I know that from experience, but let's give it a shot anyway. It's a pretty recent model. It's from 26th of June. So let's see how that performs. We can see it's been generating some nodes. It also sped out the framing elements, which it was not supposed to do. It was supposed to wait. The nodes look okay at first glance. So it looks promising. Let's do some measurements and make sure that everything checks out and we can see that it does. So that looks pretty good. Okay. Now let's bring in the framing elements that we didn't ask for yet, but it decided to provide them anyway and see what that looks like. So, okay, we brought those in. Um, I can see the design groups there. I can see the members and not bad, not too bad at all. It didn't create the roof bracing and again, no ridge or um, eaves beams, but let's see if we ask it to produce those, whether it can perform as well at least as uh, or as good as Croc 4. So there we can see it's now reproduced the entire table. I just wanted it to add the additional elements. It didn't really follow the instruction that well. It reproduced the entire table, but that's fine. Uh, we do have a feature when we bring these tables into Gen FEA to replace the existing sheet rather than to add to the end. So that's cool. We can do that. Bring it in, refresh the model and look at that. Um, yeah, not so great. I mean, it's added the region E beams. It tried to apply the roof bracing, but it did a pretty messy job of that. It didn't actually follow the slope of the roof. Okay, I thought it's a bit disappointing from OpenAI. I expected better from previous experiences. So let's try the non-reasoning GPT 4.1 model because it is actually a pretty well-performing model in most fields. I was disappointed again. So it's much faster, it's not reasoning, um, but we can see here from the nodes, it's obviously missed a lot of stuff. It just gave us like the the uh, f uh, base points, the eaves and the ridge. It didn't actually do the Berlin intersections or nothing. So I asked it to calculate those. It told me how it's gonna calculate it, but it didn't actually do it. Then I said, okay, generate the complete nodes table, including all of those internal nodes. So it started spitting out split tables and I can just tell off the bat that this is going to be incomplete. There's not nearly enough nodes to make up the entirety of the model. So let's update and see what's happening. I can see it attempted to do it, but at this point I thought it's taking too long and too many iterations. I'm giving up. Let's head over to Google Gemini 2.5 Pro and see how it performs. Now, in the past with my experiences, Gemini um, was not performing 
previously as well as the OpenAI models. But this time around, I was quite surprised and you're going to see why. So we can see the same settings here, temperature low, maximum output tokens. Um, I set the thinking budget to automatic to see what happens. I guess the other option is to set it to maximum, but it was reasonably quick. So I think it was under a minute. You can see 50 plus seconds uh, under a minute for this reasoning model and it started producing the node outputs. Now that doesn't mean it's going to um, create a um, accurate model yet, but we can see that it's been doing a lot of thinking and a lot of back end work and it's producing this table and spinning out lots of nodes. And again, it's not waiting for me to let it uh, to confirm if the nodes are correct. It's just generating the beam or framing outputs. But looking at the nodes and doing some initial measurements, it looks pretty good for a first shot attempt. So we can see there we've got the correct distances applied between the base spacing, the eaves and the apex heights. So let's just dismiss the warnings there. And then um, let's see what it's done with the framing elements. So this is still generating. I sped it up a little bit, but it was really quick. The inference speed and the time it took for reasoning was really impressive. Um, definitely it, so far outperforming all the other models. Now let's see how well it performs with actually generating the 3D elements. And off the bat, without any adjustments, it did a perfect job. So it generated the nodes and the framing elements first time correctly. That is quite impressive. That is really, really good. I did not expect that. It seems Google's models are getting better while OpenAI's models are regressing a little bit. Um, and I've had this experience in the past as well. The initial release of a new model seems to be fantastic and then it starts to regress with OpenAI. If we look at the costs here, you can see they're all pretty much the same. The O4 mini models are um, yeah, reasonably costly compared to the other ones. If we look at the Grok models, they're quite cheap. The Grok 4 one, so you can see they're like three or four cents, one cents, you know, uh, 11 point something cents for um, that discussion. So pretty cheap, you know, all, all of all of these combined would be under a dollar. Um, and they range anywhere from, you know, a, a fraction of a cent to maybe a maximum of 25 or 30 cents, you know, depending on the context length. But the result here from Gemini really great. So I thought, let's see if we can push the boundaries with Gemini a bit. I said, okay, can you actually generate wind loads? So obviously in Gen FVA, it, it knows the project location uh, because it's specified in the input workbook. Uh, it understands the model because it generated it. And I said, let's create a, a wind load case in the X direction, which is, um, as you can see here on the screen, um, along the side of the building and I didn't give it much more information. I just said full cladding. So I'm expecting it to understand based on the location and the general shape of the structure, um, understanding, you know, how to calculate and apply the wind load. And we can see again, really quick inference time and it's starting to produce the wind load output tables for Gen FEA. And if we bring this straight into Gen FEA, populate the tables and update the model, we can start visualizing the loads that it applied. And we've got the load case active. We'll switch on the loads so we can see them and we can see at first glance, it looks pretty good. So it's applied those loads in the X direction. Like we said, uh, we can see the external column loads at, at the ends are half those of the internal ones, which appear to be correct. We can see the uplift there that is created. And we can see there's a bit of, once we look at the other side of the model, um, the downward wind side, we can see that it's created a bit of a suction load there because we said no openings in the cladding, right? So I'm, I, I guess if we added some openings, we would see some internal um, loads there on, on the columns. But we can see there's the suction loads at the end and we can see the uplift there on the roof um, Berlin elements uh, applied. So. That's pretty impressive. And if we go back here and look at the reasoning um, and the logic, we can see there, you know, it's explaining how it calculated the loads and how it applied them. So pretty fantastic. The overall winner, Gemini. Congratulations, Google. Very impressive. Grok, not too bad either. But yeah, a tight one.